Okay, it's Christy Day here to teach you how to sew your commercial sole onto your textiled shoe. It also works for leather, whatever, it's the same technique. Alright, ready? You're going to start with your cobbler thread. It's a nylon waxed thread, it's uniformly waxed. You definitely don't want to cheap out. Just go ahead and get yourself some. You can find it all over Amazon, eBay. I'll have small portions of it in my shop. Um, it's not super expensive. You need like five, one, two, three, four, five. This is a little more than I need. I'm going to cut this so it's manageable. You need about five lengths of thread to get around an average adult shoe. Okay? Then, what you're going to do, I'm not going to stop this taping for anything, because I tell you, I have a little one here, I have a lot of distractions, but the big kids are coming home from school, so I'm just going to press on. Okay, ready? We're going to start off here on the curve of the foot. You've got your cobbler's all. The only key thing is that the awl has, must be, the hook size must be larger than your thread or else when you pull it through, you will cut your thread. So make sure, this is one millimeter thread, this is a 1.36 millimeter awl hook. And you know, they, they come right out, you can get multiple sizes. So we're gonna pierce in an upward motion. Make sure you can, uh, all right, you can kinda see. I'm gonna pierce in an upward motion, the sole. I did this once before, this is like take three, so I already have a hole in there. So it's super easy to get through. And I'm sorry if this is not the best video, but I guarantee you it's the only video that's going to teach you how to do this. It's not going to cost you a ton of money. So be grateful. All right, ready? Incidentally, I spent a hundred bucks to learn how to do this. So. Um, I want you to be appreciative, all right? <laughs> okay, you've got equal sides on of your thread. One on the inside of your boot and one on the outside of the boot. Can you see that? I'll set up against my white. So one on the inside, one on the outside. You can't really see it, but trust me. That's what it is. Okay, now, can I slide this maybe for you? I don't know. Somebody didn't like my last video. They said, you should be sitting, so I'm sitting now, but this is probably the last one I'm gonna do. Okay, ready? So in an upward motion, you're gonna pierce it. It takes a little force, and you're going to grab the thread that's on the inside, just like you're crocheting, and you're going to pull it through. You're going to pull up one loop, just like this, and you're going to take this tail that's on the outside, and you're going to put it in. And I'm sorry, I wish I could zoom in, but I really can't. I am seriously, I'm a fiber artist, not a camera woman. But, can you see this? I think you can. You're just gonna pull it. So this side is pulling this way, this side is pulling this way. And then you make a tight little stitch. Mm, can you see that stitch? It's right here. There's a tight little stitch. It's hard to see because it's black on black. But I'll show you pictures later. Okay, so doing it again. Space it correctly. Push in. Grab it. Pull. Take your loop. Take the tail. Pull it through the loop. And pull. I'm just going to keep doing this, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. 
and repeat. It's not rocket science. If you can crochet or knit or sew, you can completely do this. It just, it just takes a little time. You'll get into your rhythm. Really the hardest thing is uh, knowing how much force to put. Now also be careful when you're pushing to keep this hand out of the way because this thing is crazy sharp, obviously. It's going through this hardcore rubber and the felt and it will cut you. And I have been cut doing this. So a lot of times when I do this, I, I kind of put my finger on either side so that it makes some resistance for the, you know, because there's some flex in the sole. But I'm always super careful not to push too hard because I don't want to get myself in the middle of the fingers. So I'm like spreading out my fingers and here's the Here's the rubber and I push through an upward upward motion, not downward towards my hand, okay? Just a little tip for you. I don't want you getting hurt. Okay. Here we go again. I tell you I am the world's worst filmer. Okay, so let me bring you up to speed what I did before I dropped my camera. Okay, do you see these stitches? I'm now to the last stitch. What I did was I went all the way around, takes you about a half an hour, and I I pulled up, the last time I pulled up the stitch, and I stitched underneath the last stitch, pulled it up, but instead of doing a loop, I pulled it all the way out. So now I have two tails on the outside. And then I tied a knot. Okay? Now you're thinking, well, I don't want to just clip this off because then I'm going to have a little doohickey sticking out. You're right, you don't. That would look completely stupid. So, since we're trying to make a professional looking shoe, I'll show you what to do. And I'm sorry, I can't zoom in, but I can tilt down. All right, ready? You're going to go, you're going to pull your, your shoe back as far as you can getting as close as you can as to the edge of your lip. You're going to go down there from the outside and then you're going to puncture back down there. And I hope you're not hearing the neighbor mow, but the neighbor's mowing. The big kids are going to come home soon. Uh, I'm moving on to the next shoe, so I won't be showing you this for like another week. So I must grab this opportunity. So if you happen to be bothered by any noise from the background, I'm sorry. But I really want to teach you how to do this um, so that you can get started with your shoes. So Christy, it really takes a half an hour. Yeah, it really takes a half an hour. I was going to tell you guys a story in my last filming and then I messed it up. Uh-oh, so now what I did? This is a little bit uh cut just a tad right there because I tried to pull through two at once and remember how I told you that this is 1.36 millimeters and these are one millimeter because if it was too small it would cut well if you put them together they're two millimeters thickness so one of them tore a little bit not enough to make a difference here at the end stage but point taken right Okay, so now I've got these two right here on the felt side. What am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to tie another knot just to make sure. So now I've got two knots. I had a knot over here, and I have a knot again. What kind of knot? Oh, no particular kind of knot. I'm just doing a square knot here. Okay, so I've got a little knot. Now I'm going to hide this. Now this is where you kind of want thread that blends to the color um, of your shoe, but I'm kind of a lover of bright colored um, thread, and I think I'm going to do some bright colored before. So if you do bright color, you're going to have to really work hard to hide it. Um, so I go in and I do a sideways stitch. You see, I went in and just through to the outside, like so. You see that? 
Now I'm just going to grab this one. And if you do embroidery, uh-oh, I'm not going to do two at once, so I don't want to cut them again. I'm going to do one at a time. So pull it through. And pull the other one through. If I had a bigger hook, I can get away with doing two at once, but I don't. I couldn't find any, so this is how I'm going to problem solve. Okay, so I've got a stitch through here. It just went right through. You can't even see it, can you? No, and that's the whole point. And we want to hide this. So, you know, when you're doing embroidery and you're finishing off your stitch, if you're a good embroiderer, like I am, um, you'll do several back stitches in order to hide your stitching. Um, and that way, your back of your work looks as neat as the front of your work. Um, and so, if you've done that, then you know how to do this. This is all we're doing is stitching back and forth in a zigzag. And then, when I'm done with this, I'm going to re-felt, reshape this shoe through felting. Okay, so that it will really have a beautiful shape and there won't be any puffiness. Oh, that's my baby. Well, let's see, now that part's gonna to redo this. Get that up there. Go through and pull this. And then I'm gonna cut it. So I'll felt around this and it'll disappear into the felt, which is why I love felt. It's extremely forgiving. Okay. So now it is fully sewn on. It's invisible. And, but my shoe, see, is still kind of, is wrinkly right here. It's a little bit puffy back here. It's puffing out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it all down and get my awesome soap that I have made by a local soap maker just for me. It's in my shop, by the way. Well, it will be soon. She just made a whole bunch more. And uh, then I'll shape it. I'll stick my... my um, my last in here. I'm not sure which shoe this is. My customer has two different size feet. <laughs> so one is larger than the other one. I think this is not the one that goes in here, but you know, I'll get this all in here and then I'll shape around it and then I'll steam it um, to hold its shape and to finish, get rid of the little fuzziness. And that is how you finish off a felt shoe. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer them. Just leave them down there. If you will appreciate these videos, which I hope you do, because seriously, <laughs> cobblers will not share this information with you. You know what a cobbler charges to attach a sole? This sole, this exact sole. I was looking on cobbler's websites when I was first looking to buy this sole. $68. $68 to attach it. And I thought, $68? Then I thought, well, wait a second, that kind of makes sense because by the time the cobbler has paid for shipping from the, from the distributor of this sole, it can literally cost them $30. I don't know why. Not everybody has tapped into a distributor that's going to give them free shipping. I have. And I got an amazing deal because he, he believes in the, in the um, whole process. I'm trying to teach people how to do this, how to be more self-sufficient, and they totally love that. So... After they spent 30 bucks, they're only getting like another oh, what, 13 bucks. Oh, just, one bone just a minute, part. just a minute. So they're really only getting paid probably like 15 bucks an hour after they remove the old sole and put the other sole on. So that's probably completely reasonable. So, um, but point is, once you learn how to do this, you can completely resole your old boots. You can resole everything. If you there is no cobbler in your town, like there is no cobbler in my town, you can become a cobbler. You can do it. So get out there, be self-sufficient, do it. It's not rocket science. You can completely do this. You got this? 
you need souls, uh, I, you know I've got them. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I'm getting children's. Because that sounds so funny. Chil small souls for children soon in October. Talk to you later. My baby needs me. Bye-bye.